Hello, welcome, and a very nice evening indeed. And today I've got another package. It's a Kickstarter project that I backed in 2019, when the world was still quite normal. And yeah, it was a successful Kickstarter, and it is a very useful Kickstarter indeed. It is the ATX to AT project, which lets you use a modern ATX style power supply on an old AT style mainboard like a yeah, 286 or 386 or 486 and maybe with some adapter even on an XT but as it says ATX to AT it's actually for 286 and up because uh, with the AT IBM standardized on these connectors here um, which are, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 pins, it seems. And they go this way onto the main board with the ground lines in the middle. And on the other side, we have a specialized Molex style connector, which goes onto the board, which we'll see in a minute. Plus, the board has an, I think, a standard ATX socket as, as on there as well. And this project was done, is open source actually. You can visit the GitHub page, um, make your own if you want to. And it was made by a nice chap from France. He used to do, I think, uh, work on the original Memtest 86. He's a very talented hardware designer and programmer. And he has a bunch of other projects, most notably the Universal Chip Analyzer for checking old CPUs, EEPROMs, DRAM, etc. And this here is it. Um, what is it for? Why do you need this weird thing? Why don't you simply use one of those ATX to AT cables? Which look like this. This is a particularly crummy one. So here are the AT style Molex or whatever sockets uh, or plugs on the one hand and the ATX on this end. And it has this very nasty bridge because actually AT style power supplies weren't powered on by the main board, but they were powered on directly by a switch on the power supply. AT style, um, the main board actually powers them on. So there is some signal going here. And if you don't have that, you need to bridge a few contacts. And this is pretty nasty. And what's the problem? Well, the problem can be that a an old main board has failing components. For example, capacitors can fail. This is one example. This is my lovely, lovely Octec Fox 2 main board, which I liked very much. It's a very, very fast, very nice main board. It's a 286, 16 megahertz. This is pretty fast. It takes regular 30 pin sims. So this one here has four megabytes of RAM, which is insane for 286. And it had a problem. Um, before these electrolytic caps, there were so-called tantalum capacitors on here, which are these little thingies here. This is a tantalum cap, which obviously didn't replace yet. And the old tantalums from the 1980s and 1990s they could fail after like 20, 30 years. And uh, one of the failure modes, one of the most common failure modes of the tantalum capacitor is to go short. That is, they are no longer a capacitor, but they are just like a wire. So a lot of current is flowing in a short amount of time. They heat up and they go bang with the firework. And this is what happened here. And although I replaced all the capacitors afterwards, after one of them blew, I think this board still has some issues. I have to test it again. I put it away because I got a different 286 board and then a 386. But I also had another problem with the uh, with one of my self-made cards with the renovation card with the SID chip, one of the cheap uh, SID chip clones actually had a short and um, that kind of destroyed also my 386 board due to an overcurrent. And this is actually where this kicks in. 
Um, this will measure a sudden high voltage spike and there are several methods to stop that on here. There is a microcontroller on here which measures everything. There are, I think, voltage regulators and some MOSFETs and stuff like that. And they can all switch very quickly the power off, basically. And um, I think there are also two fuses here which are replaceable. They are like the last resort. If everything else fails, they will also um, trigger and have to be replaced afterwards. But the important thing is your boards won't burn if you insert failing components or like uh, make some experiments with homebrew hardware. Yeah, um, and that can basically save your boards. And I will only use new boards now with this. Uh, I actually bought two because um, they are not horribly expensive and they can save much more expensive old vintage mainboards. And let's face it, those mainboards aren't made anymore, so they get more valuable every day. And one will go into the uh, into my, my, my retro PC and the other one I will keep for experimenting with uh, other mainboards or homebrew cards and leave it on my desk, more or less, with a power supply attached. So I think this will go in here. Then the ATX power supply will go in here. There's a status display showing the current state. I think the micro USB is probably to flash the firmware, I guess. Um, I'm not sure what the config dip switches are for, but there is a manual at the website and we'll check it out and see what we have to set. And then we'll put this into my current retro PC, which is currently an 286, 12 megahertz, but might soon be upgraded to a 486, but that will be another video. Okay, so the manual is at x86.fr slash ATX 2AT. Um, well, actually, the longer uh, URL contains smart converter in there, but ATX 2AT is just fine. I will link to that in the video description as well. So there's supposed to be a manual and here we have the configuration settings. That's probably nice. So let's have a look. We have different settings for the max plus five volt current and the max 12 volt current. Currently it's set to all off. That is four amps, which is somewhere in the middle, which is probably sane default. Um, the minimum trigger current is one amp and the maximum current is 8 amps, which is probably not a good idea for my machines, but we'll see. If you have a lot of cards in there, you might want to ramp that up. And the max plus 12 volt current is currently at 0.5 amps, equating to 6 watts. The plus 5 is at 20 watts. Okay, they say here, uh, choose a decent ATX PCU, don't use an L cheapo. Not recommended to use an ATX PCU rated more than 550 watts. Back in the day, you would have something like 200, maybe 250 watts tops. So there was actually not that much power to go around. We didn't have huge GPUs or uh, CPUs running very hot. Yeah, okay, uh, I think that's it. Uh, let's attach it and see if it works. Okay, so let's give you a tour of the PC. This is my retro PC in a modern ATX case. It has a Colink KL500M modular ATX power supply, 500 watts, uh, bronze grade 80 plus. Uh, it was important to me that it's a modular one, so you can use as little cables as necessary. Cable management is all over the place at the moment. And here you see one of those nasty um, uh, ATX to AT thingies. Well, it's this time. This one is not that nasty. And it's actually quite useful because it has very nice long cables that go to a power switch at the front of the case, so I can easily switch it on. Um, well, notice that it has a power switch here, and I have to find a way. Maybe this X power header is for that. I need to find a way to attach that external switch here. So this is a very nice Texas Instruments 286 board. 
which I made a video about. I will link to that up here. It is brand new. <laughs> all the ISA slots were very tight and it was very hard to get all the cards in. It was unused. It is really fast, zero weight state. It has currently two megabytes of RAM in the form of SIP modules that I sold it myself, <laughs> more or less, and uh, has a 12 MHz AMD 286 CPU. No FPU at the moment because I don't really need that. There is an XT IDE BIOS on here, in theory with a compact flash reader, but I use a commercial one here because mine was a bit, eh, how are you doing? Um, but the BIOS works. And the BIOS allows me to use the actual compact flash card. Then there's a, what is it actually? We have currently there's an Zen AT4000 SVGA card in there. Two empty slots where normally the snark bucker, which is this card here, goes and the PC MIDI card. But due to my experiments with some other song cards, these two slots are open. Then there is Matsu 79's great Tandy card, which I recommend to everyone, which normally also feeds get, gets a feed from the PC speaker, which currently is just this nice little piezo beeper that usually I would run a wire from here to here and I can listen to Tandy and PC speaker sound with this thing. And we have the multi-IO card with serial, parallel and floppy and hard disk. Yeah, and that's basically it. And now we need to Unplug the current ATX connector, which is this beast here. So we hopefully won't need this anymore. And instead, we will have this here. I'm trying to pull up the ATX connector. Luckily, this is all keyed, so I can't really do anything wrong here. Oh, it already has power. It already has power. We already have power. It says plus 5 and tw plus 12 is 0 amps, and it's off. So I'm gonna plug in, trying to plug in the AT style connectors. So the, don't worry about the fan, the fan isn't plugged in because, let's face it, at 286 doesn't need active cooling. Okay, I will have to make a proper attachment for this with something on the back and then mount it here. And uh, but for now we can very carefully push the power button. Overcurrent detected on plus twelve volt. All right. Um, interesting. So that already kicked in. So it seems I need more than 0.5 amps on the plus twelve ray. So now it's 4.75 amps. I'm gonna put this to off, and now we have 1.5 amps. Uh, yeah, let's switch the machine off. Now it's off and switch it on again. And it successfully boots. You hear the clicking of the RAM test. Let's try the standard uh, 3.5 inch. And it's the diskette. Okay, next test will be with a snark barker installed. I'm not sure if it uses a plus 12 volt, probably because it has a voltage regulator on board to feed into the amplifier. So let's see what it says now. It says overcurrent. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so let's switch it to the next highest setting for plus 12. So there seems to be some inrush current with the plus 12 line. With the setting to 3 amps, it actually works. 1.7 amps wasn't enough. So I installed the Snark Barker and I'm gonna try to fire up a program without sound for you, but uh, it will play some music on the Snark Barker and we try to watch if anything happens here. And let's see if it changes anything. Not really. So basically the Sound Blaster uses power whether it plays something or not, but it's nice to see that it actually works. Um, the plus 5 line went a bit up to 2.2 or 2.3 amps, but that's all good. So that's pretty neat. 
Um, the device can actually also protect you against wrongly inserted CPUs or chips. So that is actually pretty, pretty neat. I think this is uh, pretty much a success. I will have to attach it in a meaningful fashion. It has some holes in it, so I can probably put it onto one of the ATX standoffs here. Uh, that would be a neat solution. And I will have to wire up the power button to go to the front, but otherwise it's very nice. So what is my conclusion about the ATX to AT smart converter? Well, I think it's awesome. I would call it the PC saver. And if I had this like two years ago, my nice 286 board wouldn't have died because some overcurrent would have been detected. And once the tantalum cap failed, uh, power would have been cut and probably nothing would have happened. And the same goes for the uh, failed SID chip on the renovation card. Here we have the ARM SID, which is fine, but one of the nano SIDs had a problem and uh, that destroyed my 386 board, at least partially. And this is really annoying, especially if you're doing this kind of stuff. But even if you're not doing homebrew cards, the tantalum caps and other components can fail, power supplies can fail. There are many failure modes in an old PC. And let's face it, your retro PC is at least 20 years old, sometimes even 30 or 40 years old. And they are getting every day more rare and replacements are getting harder to come by. And I think this is a pretty perfect solution and it does its job very well and it's not extremely expensive. It's definitely much cheaper than buying a new mainboard or a new PC and all the components that were destroyed in such an accident. So I definitely say get one of these. It's really, really awesome. Yeah, and I think that's all for today's video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Please share the video on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you're currently at. If you're at the supermarket, tell people about this video and about my other videos. And you can, of course, support me via Patreon, Ko-Fi, PayPal. Or if you can't give money, just leave a comment hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down, depending on if you liked the video or not. But make sure to come back next time because there are lots of more nice videos coming up regarding retro PCs. Uh, after this summer, I will start off again with the um, Let's Code. And I think that's also something to look forward to, but that always takes a lot of preparation. So well, that will be for the fall. And other than that, have a very nice evening and see you next time.